Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Um, on behalf of the North Shore Women's Center, thanks for joining us. Um, uh, my name is Joanne Mulhall, and today we're going to talk about your immune health and charting a course for your best immune health. And I'm going to get into why that's super important if um, you haven't already been thinking about that, and hopefully you have been. And I'm going to do a screen share here, so bear with me while I do the technical stuff that I need to do to make this all happen in our wizardly world of technology. Yay, it works. I always love it when it works. It's always so much better. Um, so my, um, I'm a holistic nutritionist, certified iridologist, level two Reiki practitioner, and I also do something called live hair analysis. And um, I have a wellness business called Core Wellness Solutions that I have had for 23 years now, a long time. It just boggles my mind how uh, fast 23 years has gone. Um, I feel like I'm a student of uh, life and nutrition and holistic health every single day as I'm constantly uh, learning more and more uh, just to stay on top of all the changing things that are going on out there. Um, so I just want to say thank you to uh, Michelle and Tanya for inviting me to do this with you today. Um, given the time and what is going on right now, obviously we are in unprecedented times. Um, you know, every decade and yeah, certainly every century, last century had its challenges and clearly this is proving to be the uh, pinnacle challenge of, of the the, the 2000s, the, like this, this century. Um, and it's, it's creating a lot of, obviously, um, stress. It's creating a lot of anxiety. It's creating a lot of confusion. It's creating, um, you know, us in a very um, modern and very um, civilized world, you know, to experience something that's very, very different than what probably um, any other part of the world would, would normally experience. And now, of course, everywhere in the world is experiencing the same thing, which is really what's making this very different. And of course, technology like this is allowing us to keep in touch with what's happening, which can be good and bad. It's allowing us to keep in touch with each other, which is certainly a good thing. And we're able to do wonderful things like this, where we can practice you know, self-isolation and social distancing, um, the things that we need to be doing right now um, in order to flatten the curve as we're all working to do. Um, but, you know, it, it connects us and we're separate, which is absolutely amazing. And I've worked on this platform for many, many years. So this is nothing new to me, but for some of you, this is probably a very new thing to be able to get online and watch a presentation or chat with other people. Um, we actually did this with our family members last Sunday night where we were planning to get together, a couple of weeks ago, we were planning to get together for dinner, couldn't happen. So it's like, okay, let's get on a Zoom call and sit and talk and catch up. So um, in talking about immune health, so from a holistic nutrition perspective and also in the world of um, naturopathic or holistic medicine, there really is a, a different approach than allopathic medicine or conventional, what we would call regular medicine from the point of view in that um, it's like tending your garden and growing vegetables in great soil in your garden. In order to grow those great vegetables that are healthy, that are strong, that are full of nutrition, your soil has to be in top shape, has to have all the minerals, the vitamins, all of the good nutrients in there to supply that to the food that you're growing. So I kind of use that analogy to liken our bodies to soil. So we need to have good soil which is or, or a good terrain we use in natural medicine we use the word terrain to have a great terrain in order to grow healthy cells okay so 
our garden is our our bod our bodies, and um, the produce of our of our bodies is our cells, and then from that our tissues and our organs. Okay, so in order to have all those things in place, we obviously in in farming, it's if it's not in the soil, it's not going to be in the food. So in your body, if it's if the nutrition isn't in your body then it's not going to feed your cells and your tissues and your organs. So I hope that analogy kind of makes sense to you. And um, as I said, you know, you can pop up comments or whatever in the chat, that would be kind of fun. Um, but questions we'll try and maybe do at the end. Um, so from that perspective, um, it's really key at this particular time, but at any time, like immune health is important anytime. We're just, really focusing on it now because I think we need that extra resistance and we need the extra re resilience. If we end up actually contracting something like a sore throat or a cough or anything that is typically going around like the normal flu, we may not be completely resistant to it. We still may get it, but we want our bodies to be as resilient as possible, meaning that it's a, a short duration and we were recover quickly and completely from that infection. <clears throat> and we all know people who are more prone to getting sick, so their immune systems are already a bit compromised. And we also know people who then get something and have a really hard time recovering from it. They have a really difficult time kind of coming back from an illness and getting rid of it and feeling 100% again. So we definitely want to um, work on that so that we can be in the best shape possible all the time to resist all these things. So the immune system really is the front line of our body's ability to be first and foremost resistant. And um, there are lots of factors that affect the immune system, but I'm just gonna give you a little bit of immunology 101 to kind of describe how the immune system works and what's, what it's all about. So first of all, I just wanted to talk about what are the parts of our immune system, which you may not even realize. So we have all the mucous membranes in our, in our nose and in our mouth, those moist tissues where we breathe in air and obviously we eat food is all going in through those um, entry points, breathing and eating. And the mucous membranes that surround that, and you can feel them obviously inside your mouth, but your nose as well has a very fine layer of mucous membranes. And also even the hairs that are in your nose act as an immune barrier. They trap dust and particles in those hairs. And then if it's an irritant, you sneeze and you blow it out so that you're not taking it into your body. Um, obviously things like in our mouth, taste and certain things like that. Like if we have something that's really, really bitter, really, really acrid or tastes um, poisonous or tastes very harsh, we're not gonna swallow it. We're gonna spit it out. It's gonna you know, trigger a response where we're gonna spit it out. Um, so the mucous membranes are really important as a first line of defense. And we're gonna get into talking about how do you keep those mucous membranes um, working properly. The next line of defense is actually what's called the parotid glands, which are in here in the jaw, as well as your tonsils in your throat. I don't know why that's pointing to the middle of the head, okay? Not quite the accurate place for the tonsils. But anyway, we know that the tonsils are kind of up in the back of our throat. So I guess if you look at them, they are kind of high up. And we know a lot of times if you've had a sore throat, your tonsils can be enlarged and get infected. So that was something that I used to suffer from as a kid. Every winter I had tonsillitis and then it morphed into strep throat as I got older. And that was sort of a chronic ongoing thing for me. Um, I have a niece right now also dealing with chronic tonsillitis. If you know someone who's dealing with tonsil issues, um, removing them is not the answer in my opinion. It's really about how do you clean the body enough so that the tonsils 
are not congested with a lot of garbage and able to function the way that they're meant to function. Okay, another big part of the um, immune system is the lymphatic system. And as part of the lymphatic system, we have many components. We've got lymphatic vessels, which are in our neck. So a lot of times you, you can feel lymph nodes in your neck if they get swollen. That's part of your lymph system, but the lymph nodes. There's more lymph nodes as in the diagram under the arms, in the groin area. Um, so you, you, sometimes if you've had an infection, you might feel swelling under the arms and in the groin. And you should absolutely, if it continues, get it checked out. It's not something to be ignored. Um, the um, spleen is part of the lymphatic um, circuitry and a big part of the immune system, as well as the thymus, so it's just right here at the breastbone. And we're going to talk um, even just a little technique that you can do with the thymus. The skin, the skin is part of your immune system. It's a huge barrier to um, everything. Once, if you get a cut in your skin and it, something gets infected there, then obviously that's an entry point for bacteria, parasites, anything to enter the body. And which is why our immune system kicks in when we have a cut. So first of all, it bleeds, which is help, helps to clean out the cut. And then there's a lot of white goopy stuff that occurs, which is our lymph, our, our white blood cells to coagulate there in the plasma to then close up the wound. And of course, if we keep it clean, it will heal. But if we don't keep it clean, it will get infected and you'll see a lot of messy, you know, yellowy stuff, not just clear in the wound. And so we have to take care to make sure that our skin if we have any kind of uh, cut or irritation on the skin over long term, we need to address that. And then a deeper part of the immune system is obviously the bone marrow. We have things that are manufactured in the marrow that are part of our immune system, our immune cells. So I um, just wanted to, um, this is maybe a little bit more complicated, but talk about how these parts of our immune system are the lines of defense. So I already mentioned that the skin, whoops, whoa, sorry. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, that the skin and the mucous membranes um, are our first line of defense. <clears throat> Also, I mentioned the cilia. So actually all of our mucous membranes are lined with these little hairs, which are protective. And then we've got um, stomach acid. Um, and a lot of people wouldn't even think about this as part of our immune defense, <clears throat> but we have a, a, a level of uh, stomach acid that is produced in the stomach that is absolutely meant to stop things in their tracks. So when we ingest something like a bacteria or a parasite or anything like that from a food, we are basically killing it. Nothing is going to survive in that proper acidic environment. In my professional practice, a lot of what I find is that a person's digestive system, in particular, their stomach function is very diminished and under-functioning. And it doesn't have the capacity to create that barrier effect. So a couple of things that we can we'll cover is, is some very simple things that you can do to increase that stomach acid and get it flowing properly. And um, urine flow, obviously, that's one way that we actually get things out of our system as well as through our other elimination organs. So um, breathing and... Um, you know, when we sweat, things like that, to make sure that our, our internal organs are functioning properly and have the capacity to deal with anything that comes into our system. So, okay, I gotta not touch my computer too erratically. It's doing weird things. So the second line defense is actually these different cells that are in our white blood cell mix of defense cells. And there's all kinds of different names for them. They have all kinds of different jobs, um, but basically they're in there kind of scavenging around and doing their thing. And then the third line of defense are sort of the commanders, uh, which are the um, T helper cells, CD4, CD8, so they're technical terms. 
They come from the thymus, they're matured in the thymus gland. And then we also have our, our, what are called our B cells, which are very specific to a type of invader that comes into the body. So we have these three levels of defense and we want to protect all of them all the time as much as we can. So um, in terms of our mucous membranes, in terms of our skin, one of the most basic ways that we want to be able to do that is to hydrate our body properly. Um, and there, I'm going to show water on another slide in a little bit. But we want to make sure that our, our, we're just simply hydrated. We're properly hydrated all the time. So drinking water, water, water. It should be half your body weight in ounces. And that's how much you should be taking as a baseline every single day more in certain circumstances of working out or if it's hot or different things like that. Um, the second line of defense with those, all those different white blood cells, um, in particular one called macrophages, they act like a little Pac-Man. <laughs> That's why I put the Pac-Man up there. If anybody remembers that game from the 90s, I loved Pac-Man. Um, Pac-Man, uh, the little Pac-Men go through the bloodstream or Pac-Women go through the bloodstream and they're just constantly scavenging, constantly, constantly scavenging for anything that is not self, that is not um, part of who we are that the body can recognize as friend. They're looking for things that are foe. So they're keeping tabs on any foreign invaders into the body to gobble them up and basically metabolize them, i.e. digest them, and then spit them out of the body, which again, will, will, that will happen through um, when we urinate or when we have a bowel movement, right? The waste material has to come out of the body. So those Pac-Man are busy all the time, all the time, all the time. And that's part of actually what's called our innate immunity versus our adaptive immunity. So all those automatic cells going around the bloodstream are just there constantly. They, you know, if the cell to cell communication is correct and on, then those will continue to go through the bloodstream scavenging for all these little bits of material that don't belong there and get rid of them. When we have adaptive immunity, that's actually where we get confronted with something like what's going on right now or a different strain of influenza, or we're traveling and we've been exposed to something in the water or something in the air in a foreign place that our body is not used to seeing on a regular basis. And then we have adaptive or specific immunity. And that's when those help T helper cells and those B cells kick in. And it's a delayed immune response because the organism has to be recognized and then the immune system has to respond. And it has to figure out, okay, I've got to create an antibody for this foreign invader, and then I can replicate and I can get it under control. So obviously a really important reason why we have to protect all these steps of our immune function in order to make it as effective as possible. So this is just a really cool visual. Our innate immunity is kind of, we're just there hanging, everything's kind of floating around and it's just doing its thing. But when we have the acquired immunity, um, we have to, it has to be a bit more active. It has to be a bit more proactive and uh, um, it has to be, I won't say aggressive, but it has to be active in actually doing its thing to create the immunity that we need it to create to identify and then respond to that foreign invader. So why, let's talk about some of the negative things that affect our immune system because in this time, there is absolutely so many things that we have influence over that we can put into place today, right after you get off this webinar. There are things that you can think about, write down, make notes about that will put you in a positive space to feel like you have something that you can actively do while we're being at home to build your immune system, not only to continue to be resistant to something like this, but let's face it, mother nature is never gonna stop creating new things to challenge 
not only the planet, but us as individuals. So to say that we're going to be able to find and create a vaccine or create a drug or whatever that's going to counter this particular thing or, you know, that it's countered that particular influenza um, virus or that particular whatever. My approach to well-being is always make your body as resistant and resilient as possible. I, I really like those two words. So maybe you might want to write them down and put them on your fridge. Resistant and resilient. Okay. Because that can apply to many, many things, not just our immune system. So the very first one I want to talk about is stress. And that's because we're under a lot of stress right now. Um, we're having to deal with things that we're not used to dealing with, which is working from home possibly, or possibly not working at all right now. Things have been closed. Um, people have been laid off, hopefully not let go, but certainly everything's been put on hold. Those of us who are working from home are scrambling with children at home. And now we've got, you know, different things distracting us or interrupting us. And it's a completely different routine. So one of the things that you can do if you haven't already done it, because everybody's new into this whole situation, is, goodness, sit down and have a really honest conversation with your partner, with your kids if they're old enough with whoever you are living with. And rather than reacting to everything that's going on, start being a little bit more thoughtful and responding. So talk about, okay, how do we have a daily plan? Who's going to do what, when, you know, I need to be like, we don't have little kids anymore, but if we did, both my husband and I work at home. So it would be like, okay, who can do breakfast? Who can do lunch and dinner? Who can do this so that I can do that? You know, and making sure that, um, you know, if the kids are old enough that they can participate and they know what their job is to help out. I think kids love knowing that if they are stepping up and helping uh, with some extra responsibility, that's certainly a good thing. And if they know that you're all in this together and you're all doing it to make everything fun and enjoyable and actually enjoy this time that we have to be kind of more in forced confinement. There's a lot of, my husband started a little thing on Facebook the other day. It's the silver via the silver linings of COVID-19, which there are many of them if we just stop and think about it. So um, I'd love you to start thinking about one of some of those silver linings and if you want to pop them in the chat, you know, they can start coming up because I think it's time that if we haven't been doing it to really think about what some of those silver linings are. So identifying some of your stressors is really, really important and making sure that you can start to address what the stressors are. So we'll get into that on the next slide. Another thing that's affecting our immune system in general is sleep. And you can see this gal here, she's on her cell phone, lying in bed. Um, that is not a great habit to begin with, and I'll talk more about why. But obviously, sleep is our reparative time. And I think um, I'm very much about what's going on in the whole environment of the planet. And I think there's a lot of really strong energies that are affecting a lot of things right now. And I think sleep is a, a kind of a, a, a missing, missing factor for a lot of people. They're waking up in the middle of the night and they may not even be super worried about things, but their sleep is just not where it should be. And that could be just because there's, there's just a lot happening out there. And I think as empathic human beings, we could all be picking up on things more than uh, at other times right now. So being able to really get into restful sleep. So put sleep down on your list as maybe something to really look at. How are your sleep patterns? What are your kids sleep or your partner's sleep patterns? What's happening in the sleep department? And we're going to talk about what you can do to mitigate that. Obviously in the bottom left, that's just kind of the fast food 
you know, not, not so healthy food choices. And this is obviously, again, a really interesting time. We see the stores closing. We know the grocery stores are still open. It's, um, you know, few at a time going in. I'm hearing now that, you know, stocks are being replenished. Store shelves are fairly full. Um, the lineups are long though, because they're letting only people in at a certain uh, rate of time. And, you know, in my mind's eye, I can kind of picture what it might have been like during the war in the last century, where people had ration coupons and they had to definitely line up to go into certain places and wait for their, you know, their turn and get their, their allotment of something. So it's very interesting that this is kind of um, like a hundred years later from the first world war actually that we're experiencing this in a very different way, but in some ways very similar. So really take this time to, um, you know, it's very easy to be at home and snacking on unhealthy foods, stocking up. Okay, you know, just be honest, how many of you stocked up on cookies or, you know, ice cream or, you know, snack foods. And if you're, if restaurants are open and you're ordering takeout, what is that looking like? This is absolutely a time to, yeah, sure, have your fun foods, but not be making it your go-to all the time. Try and think about that 80-20 rule of 80% is healthy, 80% is for your immune system, for your cellular well-being, for your energy, for your vitality especially if you've got kids at home, you know, I know it can be frustrating to just, ah, whatever, right? I'm just going to make whatever because I just, I, I can't think about it and I'm stressed and I'm just going to make whatever. But again, you know, if you can engage your kids to help, they can cut vegetables, um, they can stir things in a bowl, um, you know, divvying the rolls up, jobs up with your partner figuring it out. It takes a little bit of effort, but it's worth it. In the bottom right slide, I was trying to find sort of amalgamation of coffee, pop, alcohol. And I think someone commented on Facebook that, you know, the liquor stores are considered an essential service right now. And I'm just kind of laughing because, um, I'm just kind of laughing because it's, it's pretty interesting. Uh oh, did I lose everybody? Back to meeting. I don't think I lost everyone, but I think my slides disappeared. Hold on. Sorry, technological difficulties. Um, my screen sharing is paused. Okay, hold on. Me. something happened here sorry everybody ah oh, there we go can i get a thumbs up from anybody that they can see my screen it's still good anybody okay i'm just gonna assume that it's all good um okay so in the bottom right screen it was you know again alcohol is really taxing to the liver and really taxing to um, your overall immune function because it does deplete your body of minerals. It will lower function and you are consuming extra sugars, extra calories that are kind of what we call empty calories during that time. So great, having a glass of wine to relax or whatever, but not making it something that you're gonna dive into in, a, in excess pops or, or concentrated juices, um, high in sugars. And if they're artificial sweeteners, definitely not a great thing for your system. So you want to minimize that or, you know, you can just eliminate them for a while and focus just on water and proper hydration. Coffee, also it's a diuretic. It does deplete your body of minerals. Everybody likes their cup of coffee in the morning, which is totally cool. But if you're at home and you've got the coffee pot going and it's kind of running all day and you're going for that second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth cup of coffee, which I've known people to get into those higher cups of coffee, probably not the most benefit, especially 
It can irritate the stomach lining, which again affects that whole um, pH balance in your stomach and, and that barrier factor for digestion. So you definitely want to um, focus more on clear liquids like herbal teas and water during this time and you know save your lovely glass of wine for the weekend or tonight's Friday you know over the weekend and try not to get into some um, depleting nutrient what I call nutrient depleting habits. So let's talk about what some things that improve our immune function. Well, in order to counteract some of the stress, we can certainly, if you haven't been ever done any meditating, now's a great time to learn. And I think people have a weird idea about what meditating is and they maybe see it as a, as a heavy thing and something that really isn't something that they either want to do, <laughs> they see it maybe as work, which I get, um, but really it's just about quiet. So um, I don't think I'm a very good meditator, but I love listening to quiet music and I love listening to meditative type music, which might be, um, you know, chimes or, you know, um, flute music or um, singing bowls or, you know, Tibetan chimes or bowls or you know humming or maybe some classical music if you love classical music or just some kind of melodic music and listen if you've got youtube or spotify or whatever um or you know you can get all your tunes on apple tunes itunes you can have access to anything and everything so just sitting quietly and i like to do it actually first thing in the morning before i even get up so um, I'll, um, now I've got my setup pretty locked down. So I have, um, you know, we have like a little older style CD player with a very old iPhone attached to the docking station, but it's got a little uh, clicker thing, uh, a remote. And lots of times I'll just put it on, but I can actually control it from bed with the remote, which is kind of fun. Um, and I can switch it up and change around and I'll do like a 30 minute chakra meditation first thing in the morning and it's just something I've downloaded off of YouTube. Uh, or just putting quiet music on. I think three in the afternoon is also a really awesome time. And if you've got kids at home, that's probably a time when they tend to go rangy. Sit with your kids. This is a beautiful time to teach them that sitting still and being quiet and relaxed, it's like the kindergarten nap. Like that's the best thing on the planet, right? So sit with your kids or have them all lay down, like, you know, lay down on a pillow and we're gonna put the quiet music on and everybody's gonna lay down on the floor and we're gonna put quiet music on and we're just gonna listen to the music. And sure, you know, the first few times that, that you do it with them, they're gonna fidget, they're gonna probably start talking or whatever, but if you did it consistently, you'll be amazed that eventually the, the noise around will quieten down and they will really get into a groove and so will you. And you'll find that an awesome way to just chill and reconnect as a family. And you can do that any time of the day, but now when we're all at home, like what better opportunity to do that? Breathing, deep breathing. So I'm not seeing anybody online uh, except one gal. Um, but I'm just going to walk you through uh, a, what's called a box breath. And this is a very simple breathing technique that you can do in order to just become present to your breathing. And this definitely brings your stress level down. So you're going to take a really deep breath in and hold your hands over your belly and bring your breath down to your hands in your belly. So you're going to breathe in deeply and count to four. One, two, three, four, hold it for four, one, two, three, four, breathe out for four, one, two, three, four, hold it for four. That's the hard one, one, two, three, four. So when you push the air out of your lungs, you're gonna hold that four breath and you're gonna notice that 
at first the feeling is going to feel uncomfortable because you want to just take that breath right in immediately. But if you can just sit with it and do the count to four, you'll actually feel the air in the bottom part of your lungs, which is there, moving up. And then you can actually sometimes breathe out after that four count a little bit more, like a, there's a little bit of extra there, air there to breathe out. So the box breath is just really simple, really easy. And when you're meditating, you can practice the box breath. So one thing, um, some of us are very fortunate to be kind of out in rural wherever, as we are here on the Sunshine Coast. We're up in Seashelf, just outside of Seashelf. And Luckily, we can go for a walk and there really isn't anybody out and we can walk through the forest and there really isn't anybody there. Um, but, you know, in town or in a more congested area, that might be more difficult to do. But if you know where your local park is and you can just go for a walk through the park or around the park, I would say through the park so that you can actually, um, you know, they don't want people hanging out there and, you know, mixing with everybody. But certainly you can go for a walk and if you see someone, you're obviously gonna maintain your distance, but you can go and walk through the park and just enjoy the fresher air around the trees from the grass or pull up a beautiful picture like this and either, you know, if you have a poster of a really beautiful scene, maybe from a trip you've been on or something, or you can put this as your, your screensaver on your computer. You can sit there and put on that nice music and look at the scene. The mind's eye, when you're visually looking at something like this, you're still getting the same impression as if you were out in it in real life. So use photos and that kind of thing to really um, help you go to that magical place of relaxation. I, have, was finding pictures on sleep and I love the one of the dog. <laughs> of course, dogs are so restful. And I don't know, I tried to upload it. I don't know if you've seen the little videos um, from Pluto the dog, but if you haven't, definitely Google Pluto the dog and look at their funny little videos. You will absolutely have a good belly laugh and you'll want to share it and it'll be great to bring a smile to your face. So um, tips for sleep. Um, right now is a really good time, as I said, to check in with your sleep. What are your sleep patterns like? So one thing is, are you a night hawk? And you're sort of staying up really late and then sleeping in in the morning. We all have a natural body rhythm called a circadian rhythm. And when we follow that, we're honoring that natural cycle of our body's rhythm for wake and sleep cycles. So um, ideally, you know, when there was no artificial lighting, you know, we operated by daylight versus nighttime. And our body just naturally responds to that rhythm. Of course, now we have artificial light. We can be in a building and it can be fully lighted until 10 o'clock at night or two in the morning. But we still want to honor our natural body's rhythms. So ideally, your best sleep is between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. when you should be getting into that deep, um, REM and restorative sleep. So, you know, 10 o'clock is a pretty good goal. Um, and you can even use your iPhone to set your bedtime on there to tell you, hey, time, you said you wanted to go to bed at this time. Here's your reminder. Um, but be off of this. Be off of this thing a good hour before. Don't be on your computer an hour before. Um, try not to be watching a movie right up until you go to bed. All these things. Uh, emit different light waves and they interfere um, via the rods and cones in our eyes. They interfere with different signals in our hormonal system, melatonin being one of them. So that's the reason to get off your device and really encourage your kids to be off their device. This is why we should be restricting the times that they're on it. Certainly not at night. Um, before they go to bed because if they're having trouble getting to sleep or sleeping that might be the very first thing to check. The other thing about sleep is a really great mineral is called magnesium um, and it, that's a relaxing mineral helps you get into a deep restful sleep. You can certainly take that at bedtime in different forms powder capsules liquid. I would highly recommend that first and foremost if you're having difficulty getting to sleep 
or you might want to try a melatonin type spray with some other calming herbs in it. Um, maybe through Tanya, I can send out some recommendations to those that um, fill out their information at the end of the presentation and the feedback form. Um, for food, okay, this is obviously the, a, a very key factor on a biochemical level, on a metabolic level, is that we give our body all the vitamins, the minerals, the phytonutrients, the antioxidants, the amino acids, which come from protein, the essential fatty acids, which comes from healthy fats. It's imperative that we give our bodies all the nutrients that it needs. And then our body's amazing wisdom digests all this food, takes the nutrients out of the food, and fires it all over our body. I mean, just stop and think about it for just 30 seconds. Takes the nutrition out of our food, decides how to, where to put it, where it's supposed to go, enters the cell, the cell uses it, manufactures different things that go somewhere else in the body to keep everything functioning. Like it's really mind boggling. And we should be so appreciative of our amazing body. So do yourself a favor. And, you know, if you are going to the grocery store and, you know, stocking up and obviously fresh fruits and vegetables, you can prepare them and freeze them after you've made a meal. Or you can buy frozen fruits. To me, they're the next best thing from fresh. And I've been talking too much and now I've got a tickle in my throat. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna have to go get a water. Uh, some water. <coughs> Sorry, that's what happens when I'm talking a lot. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, obviously, you know, times are interesting right now. And we may not, I don't think fresh food is going to disappear. But this might be an interesting time to plant some seeds and grow a little garden, which could be another fantastic project for your kids to help with is to do some garden boxes if you're in a apartment or a condo or make some little boxes in the backyard and get some seeds planted. Um, I got mine the other day and I'm going to do some container planting. Um, so water, we talked, whoop, there I go again with my computer. <coughs> we talked about the importance of water and um, why that's key for keeping our, um, our mucous membranes hydrated. And um, obviously water, which is H2O, is hydrogen and oxygen. You know, chemistry 101, we actually utilize those base components, hydrogen and oxygen, for other uses in our body. So this is why drinking just good old plain water, and it actually is plain water in there, um, is super important for our immune health. <clears throat> okay, another thing is I talked about doing the, the um, no phones, etc. cetera, at, at bedtime. But really, let's talk about, and of course, this is, it's a bit of an oxymoron because I'm on my computer right now presenting to you and you're on a computer watching this and we're not doing a digital detox. But are there ways that we can actually just decide that we're gonna stay away from the news, we're gonna shut down the computer, we're gonna turn our phones off, and we're just gonna take a break. And are there times during the day when we can do that completely? One thing that is out there a lot of, it's called electromagnetic fields. And we have cell towers everywhere and there's more of them coming every day. And 5G is rolling out and that's gonna increase the number of uh, transmitters out there. And this is all affecting our cells, where our cells are constantly bombarded by these electromagnetic fields that are in the environment and in our homes, because we have Wi-Fi, we have, you know, we're extremely digitally connected. So what I'm suggesting is to really find some times, for example, this morning, even when we were out walking, um, 
I use my phone because it counts my steps, but I can turn it into, I can put it into airplane mode and I cannot have it receiving a signal when I don't want that on, especially if I've got it on my body. Another thing that improves our immune function is being in a place of gratitude because we know studies have shown that when we're happy, when we're calm, simply, and one way to do that is writing a gratitude journal or just finding 10 things every day and repeating them to yourself. Because when you're in gratitude, there absolutely isn't really any, any, it's like two things can't really exist at the same time. When you start to really focus on what is good and what is you know, working and, and, and great about this situation or any situation, the fear and the anxiety kind of drops to the side. So just try that. Sit. You can do that all while you're meditating or having your quiet time is just to sit in gratitude and really focus on um, all the great things in your life. Smiling and not just outer smiling, but inner smiling. In the Taoist traditional Chinese medicine philosophy talks about the inner smile. And I really love this philosophy because it's talking about how do you bring that joy and that outward smile, but actually bring it right into your body and make every single cell in your body smile. And if you try it, it's a really interesting exercise. Um, the other thing that I put up here, which someone posted on Facebook the other day, and I really like this, is that, you know, again, let's focus on what we can do and sort of influence within our environment and try and let other things go so that it's not the noise that we're trying that's interfering with our healthy day-to-day -day interaction. So the things that we can control and focus is our positive attitude, um, how I can be recommend, following the recommendations, my own social distancing, kindness and grace to those that I am talking to and interacting with. We seem to find people are it's really bringing out the best in people and they're, they're super kind parts of who they are. And then for those that are really distressed, it's really amplifying that and making things come across as quite negative. So we really wanna just focus on kindness and compassion to others. Turning off the news, as I said, doing the digital detox and finding fun things to do at home. You know, making a list. Again, we're only kind of a full week into this and we don't know how long it's going to continue. So um, making a list of, uh, you know, we started a project list for the house and, you know, my husband plays music. So, and actually we've had a really, both had a really busy week of work. So we haven't gotten any of those things yet, but we're hoping to over the weekend and into next week when things kind of settle down a little bit. And um, yeah. Uh, I love that one. I can't control the amount of toilet paper at the store, but I can control how much of the, the supplies I have, how much I use them. So um, on a nutrient level, I talked about all the vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, et cetera. So there are some key things that are helpful for your immune system and you can emphasize more of those, certainly in the foods, but I'm a big advocate of uh, supplementation, especially in a food form, so that it can add on to your healthy eating, which is vitamin C. Um, it's been shown to actually help the action of those macrophages, those Pac-Man type, Pac-Women type cells. Um, zinc as well. And zinc is an interesting one because if you're low in zinc, it's very, um, usual that you are low in all other minerals and um you know zinc is a direct connection with how immune function happens so if your immune system is low then upping the zinc amount is crucial but also upping all your minerals not just zinc so again getting it from all your fruits and vegetables vitamin a also vitamin e um, and vitamin D, which I did not put up there. Those are all key fat soluble vitamins to um, really, they're the key antioxidants and we can go up to high, high levels of those, especially vitamin E in the vegetables and vitamin, or sorry, vitamin A in, in the vegetables, in the orange and yellow vegetables, but we also want it from fish. So vitamin A, you know, cod liver oil, good old cod liver oil. I used to get that as a kid. 
And then I'm talking on the right hand side, I put pictures up on of three mushrooms. And um, medicinal mushrooms have some really amazing immune supporting uh, benefits. And you can get them as a tea, as a tincture, in a blend that you can add to um, smoothies or different things. So something like mataki, um, reishi mushroom, which uh, we have this mushroom growing in our wonderful little forest next door. Poria is a mushroom. Um, also, if you are feeling ill or if you're feeling um, like you're catching something, um, don't make the assumption right off the bat that it might be this particular virus. Um, but do the things like the hot water and ginger and lemon and um, garlic, uh, extra garlic raw onions, those are all fabulous things um, that you can eat on a regular basis. And with the zinc, you can see all the raw nuts and seeds there that are high in zinc. You know, snacking on those kinds of foods is really beneficial. Avocados are amazing. They have vitamin E, vitamin A, they're rich in all kinds of vitamins and minerals. So absolutely adding avocados and they, they keep quite well and you can actually freeze them. If you buy them and uh, put them in the freezer, um, they're kind of like bananas. They'll, they'll stay green until you use them. The texture might change a little bit, but if you're using them in smoothies or making, you know, adding them to other things, they're perfectly great for that. I just thought this was a great visual too of some things that we could talk about to sort of change our mindset. And a positive mindset definitely has a great benefit for our immune system. So, you know, I'm stuck at home and shifting that to being, I get to be safe at home and spend time with my family. Um, instead of focusing on that you will get sick, that you'll be following what the guidelines are and washing your hands and knowing that you're decreasing your chances of getting sick or spreading it to anyone else. Um, that you'll run out of items while you're at home, but that you've prepared enough for this. Hopefully you don't have hundreds and hundreds of rolls of toilet paper, but you have enough of what you need to definitely um, get you through um, until you can get out. And clearly the stores are open and it is possible to replenish supplies. But you're using what you have wisely, which is kind of cool. Like I think it makes us all really think about um, how we use our daily uh, amenities and um, maybe being less wasteful, which is a great thing. Everything is shutting down. I'm panicking, but we know that the most important things are staying open and um, our governments are working 24-7 uh, to keep track of things and keeping everything functioning as much as we can. <clears throat> and again, this idea of uncertainty is just <clears throat> looking at what you can control in your situation. You can control your actions. Um, calling and keeping in touch with people. The last week we've just reached out to friends that we haven't talked to in a while and just to say hi and check in with them and let them know that we're thinking about them. And as I've already reiterated, getting enough sleep, proper nutrition, meditation or prayer and doing other things that you love at home or finding things that are new things. Um, you know, pulling the coloring book out with the kids and having a coloring session or art. My uh, husband's been doing a couple of sessions with my five-year-old nephew online and they've been doing little art projects and you know they've been you know talking my husband's a biologist so they've been doing some fun things around that and you can certainly do that online and your kids friends can do that online too so another way that they can use tech technology in a good way so we're getting to the top of the hour and I just thought this was kind of funny it ended on a funny note it was it was on Facebook the other day and I went that's cute what is your next travel destination and they all have kind of a, a Mexican las kitchenes las lounges Santa Bedrumas Porto Gardenes los bed Costa del Balconia Balconia San Bathroom eh, la rotanda de sofa see even when you say it with an accent it actually sounds pretty pretty exotic so I thank you very much for your time and your attention. That's my contact information. I'd love to hear from you. Um, that is my website with um, my different services and um, newsletter information. I am in the process of updating it. So it's a little bit mm -mm right now, but that's okay. It's 
there's still good information on there. And then uh, what I would like to do is put up in the chat um, the feedback form. So let me just, <clears throat> I'm gonna stop the share and I'm gonna put up the feedback form here. So you'll be able to click on this in the chat. And if you can click on that form and please give Tanya um, the feedback on this, um, that would be really much appreciated. Um, you know, we can run it again or we can run a different version of it and hopefully um, really keep everyone um, feeling healthy and well and serving you with tips and ideas on what you can do to just um, keep your keep your best health as elevated as possible during this time. So um, any questions from anyone? Okay, Anya, do you have a question? And by the way, you can unmute and you can turn on your um, video if you'd like. Um, if you unmute, just um, go to the microphone area in the bottom left part of your screen and you can unmute yourself and then you can actually ask the question. Hi, it's, it's Anya. Hi. Hey, thank you for doing this presentation, I appreciate it. I just have a, a question. Um, being in self-isolation for the past week, um, I have a tenant below me who is a um, heavy smoker. Mm. So I am, uh, despite it being a non-smoking building, I am being subjected to secondhand smoke for over a week now. Other than keeping the windows open and, and fans going, is there anything else that I should be doing to protect my immunity to being exposed to secondhand smoke? Oh, that's such a good question because uh, where we live, um, there's a deforested area right behind our house. <clears throat> and on Monday and Wednesday, they were doing slash burning of wood piles. And the smoke was unbelievable. So it wasn't cigarette smoke, but, you know, we were all like, holy cow, we're dealing with a respiratory virus and this guy is lighting up, you know, huge piles of wood back here and the smoke is just billowing and we couldn't get in touch with anybody to complain about it. So I totally appreciate um, what you're saying. Um, I don't know if you have any essential oils on hand, but eucalyptus um, is a great one for the respiratory system. Um, and if you have an internal um, heating system, you can put um, eucalyptus on your furnace filter or maybe on an air filter that you've got circulating in your room that will help kind of disinfect and clean the air you can use lavender and a few other essential oils as well if you might have that um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend any kind of other disinfectant because it's a bit more chemical based um, and maybe see if you can have a conversation with your neighbor and um, like could they not just maybe go for a walk or go outside instead of smoking, is it a smoking, you're saying it's a non-smoking building? It's a non-smoking non building and the strata has been very slow to take any action. Mm. I guess communicating with him or her directly and just seeing if they're open to smoking somewhere else because. But, yeah, thank you for the suggestions. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, Sandu, you're very welcome for the presentation. Um, Dar, you asked me a question to me privately. Do you want me to just type you a response or is it okay if I um, say the response to everybody? Because your question says to me privately. It's okay to everybody. Okay, great. Um, so Dar is an, uh, immune compromised with Crohn's and coming off Remisade. Is there any additional that may be helpful to boost immune function? Um, well, really all the things that I talked about. Um, and, you know, with your Crohn's, uh, I'm assuming that you might 
be aware of things that are tr that trigger it. And I know stress is always one of them for Crohn's, right? So um, I would say definitely on whatever you can do to keep your stress levels low, keep yourself in a calm and happy, balanced place. And that might actually, as I suggested, take a little bit of effort for you to, you know, it's a great thing to just write down and try and identify. A lot of times we're stressed about things and we don't really necessarily know what we're stressed about or we do, but we're not sure, you know, it could be a surfacing and then there could be something underlying that surfacing that's really the stressor. And then maybe through figuring that out, we can actually address it better so that we can have that conversation with someone or we can express what we feel about a situation that's making us feel unhappy or sad or frustrated or angry and get to those root causes of things so that we can really mitigate. A lot of our stress comes from not being able to express how we feel about things. And of course, we never want to express things in an in a, in a, in a aggressive way, but we all should feel empowered to express things about how we feel about any given situation with, um, you know, with the intent of being heard. I hope that was helpful. And for you on a, on a nutrition level, Dar, I would uh, see if you can be making smoothies in a blender because you don't want to be eating a lot of raw fruits and vegetables with your Crohn's. But if you can do something up in like a bullet blender or, um, you know, the little bigger one, the Nutribullet or whatever kind of blender you might have to blend a bunch of stuff up and get all those greens in there without kind of irritating your digestive system with the excess fiber and cellulose. Okay, great. Any other questions? Okay, well, I have recorded this. Um, I will end the recording now and I'll get this as soon as it renders, I'll get this off to Tanya and, and uh, she'll figure out what she's gonna do with it. And um, other than that, thank you very much for attending. I really appreciate your attention and I hope to be talking to any of you or all of you again some other time. Have a great Friday and a great weekend.